Imagine a business that made a product that killed up to one half of their best customers. It wouldn't kill its users suddenly, but slowly and insidiously through poisons that cause or exacerbate cancer, heart disease, strokes, and lung disease. Imagine that the companies knew their product was deadly and addictive, but kept manufacturing it anyway. Imagine that the company spent billions of dollars every year to replace their dying customers through advertising campaigns that hook new users, especially young ones, by making the product look fun, sexy, and inviting. Meet the cigarette. Hi, I'm Christy Turlington. If you're a woman who smokes and you want to quit, you're not alone. The fact is that most women who smoke want to quit, but they can't find the time or they've tried before and they think they can't do it. Or maybe they're afraid they'll gain weight. If you or someone you love smokes, listen up. You can quit, and when you do, you'll know how good it feels to take control of your health. It might be hard, but it's worth it. If you smoke, quitting for good is the single most important thing you can do for a healthy life. I know because I'm one of the women who has kicked the habit. It's one of the best things I ever did. In view of the continuing and mounting evidence from many sources, it is the judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. By 2025, 27 years from now, 500 million people worldwide will die of tobacco-related disease. That's a Vietnam War every day for 27 years. That's a Titanic every 43 minutes for 27 years. How did it happen that this deadly product claiming the lives of 430,000 Americans each year became so popular? You've come a long way. Introducing new Virginia Slims, the Slim cigarette for women only, tailored for the We may have come a long way in some ways, but when it comes to tobacco, women have taken many steps back. Today, there are many more deaths in this country each year from lung cancer than breast cancer. Women with breast cancer have, oh, 85, 90 percent five-year survival rates. For women with lung cancer, it's only about 16 percent who live five years beyond the time of diagnosis. The number one cause of cancer deaths in women is lung cancer. The rate of lung cancer in women has increased by 600% in the last 50 years. Beginning in the 1920s and continuing today, tobacco companies have targeted women with aggressive advertising campaigns designed to win them over. The cigarette has been sold as a means for weight control and a symbol of freedom and independence. Later themes, such as it's a woman's thing or more recently find your voice, have continued um, to suggest that um, the cigarette is somehow a badge of, of women's freedom. I think the irony is that it's just the opposite. Cigarettes have been portrayed by Hollywood and the media as a glamorous accessory that will make women seductive and alluring. But the promised freedom and attractiveness turned out to be anything but. The real ploy behind the marketing was to get women hooked on one of the most deadly and addictive substances we know. That's true. It won't happen to me. <laughs> Lung cancer is a possibility. You know, I do think about that. I have watched things on emphysema, and you know, it's very scary. I guess it's just not the way I visualized myself dying. Maybe that sounds weird, but I've always just figured I'll, you know, live till I'm old and get hit by a truck when I'm 70. My father died of lung cancer. He was 64. It was a senseless death because it could have been prevented. Not everyone who smokes will die from it, but as many as half of all long-term smokers will. Everyone thinks she won't be the one, but why take chances? I really don't think smoking is bad. Um, it, that pretty much depends on how often you do it. Lung cancer, emphysema, heart disease, anybody that thinks that they're going to be able to smoke and won't develop some of these um, uh, complications or diseases is delusional. I feel as though that I'm young and there's no way possible I can get lung cancer. I'm only 24. 
Meet Pam Laffin, who started smoking when she was just a kid. I started smoking because I wanted to look older, and I got hooked. Cigarettes gave me asthma and bronchitis, but I couldn't quit. I didn't quit until I got emphysema and had a lung removed. I was 24. I'm 26 now. The medication, which I'll take for the rest of my life, left me with this fat face and a hump on my neck. I started smoking to look older, and I'm sorry to say, it worked. The things that I didn't understand about smoking-related illness are, first of all, the doctor doesn't say you have cancer and you, or you have emphysema and then you die. It takes a while and it's um, not a pleasant way to live. The transplanted lung went into rejection, which means my body started to reject it. And now my 13-year-old daughter um, kind of feels like she's the head of the household um, because of a lot of the responsibility of the household falls on her. And so I feel really bad. Um, I feel really guilty that I took away their childhood. I feel really guilty that they have to worry about me. If I have to go to the hospital in an ambulance and my kids watch me go away in an ambu ambulance, they really don't know if I'm ever coming home. So they don't know if they're ever gonna see me again. When Pam understood how sick she was, she dedicated herself to educating women like you. She died just before we completed this video. She was only 31 years old. It's heartbreaking but true. If you smoke, it can kill you. Every cigarette hurts you. We're not here to bring you down. We're here to bring you the truth, woman to woman. It's not like I'm hurting anyone but myself. My mom smoked, and I hated it as a child. Swore I would never smoke, and I smoked. Tobacco companies worked hard for years to make us think that smoking was a civil right, and non-smokers just had to put up with it. Now we know better. The California Environmental Protection Agency estimates that secondhand smoke, sometimes called environmental tobacco smoke, or ETS, causes 35,000 to 62,000 deaths a year from heart disease in non-smokers. That number includes our husbands, our families, the ones we love. I have a five-year-old little boy and he tells me all the time, Mom, you're gonna die when you smoke. Listen to your kids. Environmental tobacco smoke is especially dangerous for babies, young children, older people, and people with health problems. Secondhand smoke causes asthma, lung infections, and even sudden infant death syndrome. The Surgeon General um, came out with a report on secondhand smoke, and the Environmental Protection Agency recognizes cigarette smoke as, a, as an environmental danger. And I can tell you personally of people that I know who never smoked but died of lung cancer. I'm not hooked. I don't really think it's that hard to stop. Most people probably do. I don't. It's more, I think, of a, a mind challenge. I'm not really hooked, per se. We know that almost all smoking starts in the teenage years before people really are thinking at all about long-term health consequences. And many young people uh, who smoke say, oh, I won't be smoking in five years. I can't see myself married with kids and smoking. There's no way. I guess it's just because of the age I'm at right now. All that's pretty much uh, a myth because most kids who were daily smokers as teens are still smokers uh, five years later. Almost every smoker I've ever talked to started out believing she could quit whenever she wanted. So let's look at all the facts. Nicotine is uh, one of the most addictive drugs known to man, and one of the most destructive substances in our society. In the beginning, it might not have been known that the nicotine was the addictive substance in cigarettes. But the cigarette companies found that out quite quickly. A lot of what the tobacco companies knew decades ago has now come to light in recently released internal industry documents. The cigarette should be conceived not as a product, but as a package. A product is nicotine. Think of a cigarette pack as a storage container for a day's supply of nicotine. Think of a cigarette as a dispenser for a dose unit of nicotine. Think of a puff of smoke as a vehicle of nicotine. We now possess a knowledge of the effects of nicotine far more extensive than exist in published scientific literature. Moreover, nicotine is addictive. We are then in the business of selling nicotine, an addictive drug. You raise your right hand. 
Compare what these secret documents reveal to what the CEOs of these same companies were saying in public. Yes or no, do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I don't believe that nicotine or our products are addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. How can they say that? It is especially important for women to understand how harmful and addictive tobacco is, because when a woman gets pregnant, her smoking harms her unborn baby too. Women who smoke are more likely to have smaller and sicker babies. Women smokers are also more likely to be infertile and have more miscarriages than non-smokers. Some women say, well, I'll quit the first time I become pregnant. It's very important not only to encourage women uh, to quit smoking either before or at early stages of pregnancy, but to remain quit after the baby is born because only about a third of the women who successfully quit smoking during pregnancy are remain non-smokers after the baby is born. Despite all that we know about how dangerous it is, many women continue to smoke during pregnancy. It's so much better never to start. But if you or someone you love is pregnant and smoking, get help. Sure, I smoke, but at least I don't do drugs, have unsafe sex, or get drunk. Every year, tobacco kills more Americans than all of those who die from AIDS, illegal drugs, alcohol, car crashes, homicides, and suicides combined. This is a healthy human lung. This is a lung removed from a patient who had emphysema. The worst addiction that we have is cigarette smoking. Let's get this straight. Tobacco is the leading preventable cause of death by far. Almost half of all long-term smokers will be killed by tobacco. Some deaths cannot be prevented. Tobacco deaths are completely preventable. It's better to smoke because if I quit, I'm gonna get fat. All of my friends that are smokers are, that's one of the reasons why they keep smoking because they're so afraid of gaining weight. Women are much more concerned about their weight than are men. Cigarette companies know this and want you to think that smoking will help keep you thin. Let's hear from some women who have successfully quit. I didn't gain any weight. I think that if you implement some daily exercise into your life, some other types of physical activity, maybe walking, as opposed to standing outside and having a cigarette. People who quit smoking, on average, gain a few pounds. What would you rather have? a few extra pounds, or bad breath, yellow teeth, smelly clothes, losing several dollars, if not six, five or six dollars a day uh, to an industry, which is ultimately very likely to make you a victim uh, and to claim you in an early death. And if you think that smoking makes you look good, think again. Don't look at the pictures. Don't look at the Virginia Slims and, you know, they're free, alive with freedom. Follow a smoker around and look at how crippling it is. My nails were yellow and brittle. My skin was, you know, dry. Uh, I'm not even going to get into the number of men that I missed out on dating because they didn't date girls who smoked. <laughs> I smoke light cigarettes so I won't get hurt as much. Something wonderful the cigarette happened. companies knew when, when people started worrying about the health effects of smoking. They made changes in cigarettes to make smokers think they were smoking safer, calling them light and pure. These changes were part of a long-running public relations campaign to hide the real health hazards of cigarettes, to keep current customers smoking, and to attract new smokers. That didn't deter me from smoking them because they were light. Why wouldn't they be better for you? What I found with cigarettes that are supposed to be light and supposed to be, I guess, better for you is, is the idea, is that you just smoke more of them because there's less nicotine, so you feel like you, you haven't gotten your full hit and you need another one. It's interesting that since filtered cigarettes have been developed and have become more popular, the types of lung cancer that people get, including women, has changed. There's no such thing as a safe cigarette and the poisonous ingredients in cigarettes aren't just limited to tar and nicotine. Here's a typical recipe for a cigarette. Lead, ammonia, a household arsenic, cleaner. used in rat poison, benzene, used in making dyes, butane gas, used in light carbon poison. monoxide, a poisonous gas, DDT, a banned insect. Polonium-210, a cancer-causing radioactive element. <coughs> I've tried to quit, but I can't. <laughs> 
if you're paying attention to the news now, then you know that smoking's dangerous. But at this point, how do you stop? But I think I could quit one by one. You know, I just can't, like, like okay, I'm throwing this pack away. I'm not smoking ever again. No, I can't do that. It's not a sign of weakness if you have to uh, use a patch to quit smoking. It's a sign that you've uh, determined that you're going to improve your health, and this is the way you're going to do it. But I just think about what my life felt like before I was smoking again, and it was a much better place to be, and I'd like to go back there. The good news is you can quit, and there's help. It might not be easy, it may not happen the first time, but there are 50 million Americans who have quit. That's more than who still smoke. There are also exciting new developments in pharmaceutical therapies that can help. I think it's very important to emphasize that it's never too late to quit smoking. Don't stop trying. I tried several times to quit, and I was finally able to do it. Don't be discouraged. It takes time. I mean, you're literally changing your life. I'm strong. I have to be strong. I, I am strong. And you really have to get your mind in that sense that you're not going to, you know, that control that you are now in control, not the cigarette. Every time you don't give in to that urge, you feel so good. You're so happy that you didn't smoke. And then you're like, ah, oh, you feel better. It's past. Your hands don't smell. Your hair doesn't smell. You don't have to hide it and run and brush your teeth and hide it from anybody. You know, you're just happy with yourself that you didn't give in. Now that you know you're not alone in this, reach out for help. For great quitting tips, visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's website. You can also visit Dr. Bill at Thrive Online on Oxygen.com. He's a former smoker himself and offers a lot of help to stay motivated and stay healthy. The point is to keep trying. Do whatever it takes. It's your body and your life. Don't give up giving up. Lines unspoken. Hearts 